Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition, with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. We have a great list for tomorrow and maybe for next week. And Miss Vegas, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, and I hope everyone's having an amazing weekend. Um, really excited about the market, but you know, the holiday season is approaching, so you have to be cautious because... I think a lot of people already are off this coming week. So it'll be interesting how the market volume will reflect that, but anything's possible. So today's list, we're going to talk about Peloton, Roku, Netflix, AMD, Uber, and Lulu. So let's get right into it. So we're going to talk about Peloton. And, um, you know, this is the company that has the exercise equipment and, um, you can actually ride the equipment and then you have now they have like uh, a screen where you can actually ride with other people and it's quite you know quite an interesting product uh it has become actually a wall street and main street criticism actually in the past couple weeks um there was an ad that was released by the company in early december about a husband and wife that were buying the peloton and then they got backlash from viewers that found the advertising very sexist and that was noted also a note from short selling firm Citron. And they said that the uh, company has a very unrealistic valuation. However, other people uh, critique Citron's research call and uh, mention that, uh, you know, some people say the stock's $5. And I'm like, I don't think so. Um, the, you know, we, we see that there is a lot of activity going on in Peloton. Uh, there is activity specifically in the March 20 options, uh, the $34 calls and the $38 calls um, coming up in March. So uh, we'll see what happens on Peloton. But you know what? I think it's one to look at. You know, Peloton is very different than, let's say, competing with a company like uh, Planet Fitness. I mean, they have the equipment. Planet Fitness is more about the gym. So it's a very different uh, business, but you know what? I think Peloton at the end of the day should be one you put on your list. So Jim, let's hear about Peloton's chart. All right, well, it's a new IPO that just came out and it kind of pulled back right at first. And then all of a sudden it got a lot of interest by the, the traders out there. And it had a pretty good little spike all the way down here from 20, oh, right around 2050, all the way up to about 30, 3680 somewhere right in there probably around 36 nine around 37 but we are creating a little descending triangle right now i know there's a lot of interest in this stock so you just got to follow the trend i think it can pull back a little bit more it depends if it turns around come monday we did hit a moving average here at 20 and it's starting to kind of or that's the 34 and We'll just have to see what happens there. I usually call that 34 um, a support level. I'm using Trend Spider platform also. If you're not familiar with it, I'll be using it on all the charts today. So let's pull up the, let's go in here and pull up. I got it kind of down to about three minute. Well, we'll go to the one minute here. <clears throat> go to the five minute we did have kind of a pullback on it go to the one more one hour chart there we go so I've got we got a descending triangle right now and we did break below that real strong trend line that I wanted to stay at so it depends on what happens tomorrow if it wants to bounce back up and go up back to resistance and that'd be right around this first one will be right around 3190 if it decides to trend up if not it looks to me like it still wants to pull back a little bit and that's going to be this support level right here and that's going to be at the 27 dollar level that'll be your low support then you have the next one's going to be right at 28 and then your next one's going to be right here around 29.17, somewhere in that area. So those are the three supports. We're at a pivot point right now. It's going to make up its mind which way it wants to go. It did break that critical trend line, though, and could pull back a little bit. Or it could retrace and bounce back up to that 31.90. 
We just have to kind of follow the trend. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Roku. Yeah, so Roku, uh, definitely we see you. Um, you know, Roku obviously is going to be growing uh, their streaming platform in the advertising market. I mean, Roku has seen their advertising business gain a lot of strength over the last couple of years. You know, their business platform generated $630 million in the trailing 12 months. And uh, apparently this year, according to RBC Capital Markets, uh, Mark Mahaney, Roku is going to generate about $600 million in ad revenue. Uh, they did mention as well, the company, Roku, that the advertising accounts for as much as 75% of their platform revenue in some quarters. They also mentioned that the revenue for their ads are going to grow about two and a half times over the next few years, reaching about $1.5 billion probably by 2022. So despite increased competition in the connected TV advertising, which we know uh, Amazon has, and as well as a push for, uh, by traditional pay TV providers to move into the connected TV space, you know, Roku is growing its share of the burgeoning advertising market. And uh, the amount of ad inventory that they control is very impressive. Um, on average, they have about 32.3 million active accounts, spending an average of about three and a half hours a day on the Roku platform. So that is very interesting. And you know what? Uh, Roku is on its way uh, to doubling their ad revenue. So I think definitely they will have a lot of significant competition. However, Roku is ready to uh, compete. They're ready. So, Jim, let's hear about Roku because it's definitely one to still keep on watch for many, many, many people. Well, you know, we've been very bullish on this trade. It's kind of consolidated, little, consolidated here a little bit lately, but we've been very bullish on this trade. And we're going to go to the daily. And we're just going to see this triangle that we're building up right now. We have had a breakout all the way down here from the year low, right there at 27, ran all the way up to a, to a yearly high of right around 175. Then it had a real strong sell-off there within a couple of weeks and found that trend line right here. And then we've hit that a couple of times on the way back up. And here we are again, back down on that trend line. And this is brought to you by trendspider.com. And so I think we're at the bottom of that channel right now, and it's going to move back up. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up to an hour, see what the hour chart tells me. It's kind of a little bit more fuzzier here, but you can see what I'm saying. We, we are at a very solid support level right here at 37.95. That's what we got to break tomorrow. I mean, Monday, yep tomorrow and see if we can bring it back up to this other resistance line right here right around the 149 area I've got a couple spots in there we're going to bring this up to three minute I think it's going to be like a rinse and repeat trade here where you had that big breakout come up here and it pulled back to that support line at 136.81 then you had another big breakout all the way back with a higher high and then she pulled back here, and here we are again at this support level. We have had a little descending pattern here, but I think it's just squeezing right now for another breakout to move up. I'm very bullish on Roku, so we're going to draw a little trend line in here for the next resistance. Right now, we're at, I think we're right down here at 136.86, and we're going to pull another trend line in here, and we're going to try to find the next resistance. I went right over here to the left, hit that horizontal bar and we've got a little trend line right here so I'm going to go ahead and bring that all the way over here and we're going to smack down right there at 137.16 that's what we got to break if we can break past that we're going to move on up to the next resistance level at 137.57 and then we have the next one here at 137.95 and I think we can start consolidating right here at the 138.23 and if the momentum picks up for the next week I do believe we might have a slow week this week, so please play, trade cautiously till the end of the year. We did have our great Santa Claus rally, and it was just beautiful. But 138.23 is the one we got to break, and we do have a lot more highs we can get up to. And low support, like I said, 135.73 if it decides to pull back. But I've got a solid support right here where these dots are at 136.45 and then we got a, we're got we right now at the pivot point in that channel at 136.81 so that's it for Roku 
you can always stop these videos and write down some of these support levels. Uh, feel free to do that. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Netflix, another hot one we've been watching. Yes, and Netflix, you know, is uh, definitely something, you know, a little, sometimes some people feel a little disappointed uh, uh, for years, for the year on Netflix holders, because, you know, the stock did rally at the start of the year. It actually had gained around 60 in the first quarter, and then it kind of turned around in July, gave up kind of all those gains in the third quarter. And there's, you know, three reasons to think that, you know, in 2020, will Netflix look like the first half of 2019? And this was an article that was published um, in the NASDAQ News by Martin Tillier. And, uh, you know, some of his comments were about, you know, that the public in the second half of last year has a feeling of inevitability to it. And um, you know, saying that you know Netflix has it was trading when it first came out, you know, below fifty dollars. It has a very rapid subscriber growth, and it has actually driven the stock's gains, and that's kind of where everything first started. So even though some things sometimes come to an end, um, I think still people are going to subscribe to Netflix. Um, you know, it doesn't matter that there's competition; that's fine. But you know what? There's a lot of shows on Netflix that people love to watch. And they're not going to want to cancel the subscription and then say, well, I'm only going to subscribe to, you know, Disney Plus or Apple TV. I think the fact is that a lot of these subscriptions, I believe, are still cheap, not that expensive. That, you know what, to have two or three subscriptions, people don't care. They want to watch what they love. And I think a lot of people are still going to keep their subscriptions. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Netflix uh, continues and recovers from the pullbacks it's had. Um, their overseas growth was led by the Asia Pacific region, uh, where the revenue grew 153% over the last uh, two years. And uh, they've also seen a 148% increase in subscribers. Also in Europe, uh, revenue and subscriptions uh, have grown a lot in the same period. So there is you know, still a big market for Netflix to conquer. And I think maybe sometimes, um, you know, this competition has, you know, made things a little bit slower. But you know what, Netflix, you know what, I'm loving it and I'm bullish on Netflix. Jim, your thoughts on oh, that? Oh, yeah. Well, we had a real beautiful week on Netflix last week. It rose about $36 in five days. So that's that's a huge gain. And we're right now at a double top. And that's right here, 337.17. I got a hard resistance to break here at 336.90. But that 337.17, you can see we topped right there, and we hit that also last Friday. You can see the engulfing candles right here, one right after another that just broke each other's base, all five of them, just every day, just a bam, bam, bam. And we made money on this trade last week. So let's pull this down. But it did have a real hard sell-off this year, as you can see. We had the... Um, Right here, when we had the beginning of the year, when everything sold off real hard, it had a real nice comeback, bounced up to a double top high, and then pulled on back to that support level at 337.17. And then we went and retested that high again at 384.49. And then this is probably one of the biggest ones that sold off throughout most of 2019. I think it was like 40 some percent. Dipped on down here to this 255 area, and we were calling this out in the room. And right now we're back up to that double top resistance. So I'm going to call that a pivot point on the year. If we can break past that 337.17, that's going to be the next resistance. Right now, this 336.90 is going to be the hard resistance to break. If we can get past that, we'll bring her up to 341.48 and 345.42 for maybe the end of the year. Really, I'm going to be bullish on this probably into 2020 in the new decade and i'm just going to pull up one more chart here we'll pull up three minutes see what the three minute tells us so i've got right there at that this level right in here at that 336.91 that's where we closed at so we need to break past that resistance level that i mentioned earlier that 337.17 or 12 or what number that was and let me pull up the daily one minute see if it says anything else to me yeah this this is going to give all the information we need right here so we've got that resistance to break 
if we can break past this 336.91, we'll get to that 337.17, then we got this 337.36 all the way up to 337.64, and we have another high past that, and that's going to be right around the 338 area. And then we'll just take it from there. And that's going to be Netflix. And the next one we're and, going to talk uh, about. Go also ahead. Also with Netflix, we have a uh, option swing trade in play right now as well. And the one that we have in play right now is the uh, 350 calls for January 3rd. So we do have Netflix uh, option calls in play yep. for a few weeks away from now. So, um, and those are looking really good. So, yes, also. Uh, definitely, you can take a look at those if you're not in an option trade and you're watching this video, you may want to check out. And you don't have to may maybe get that strike. You may want to get something closer to the money. Maybe you might want to get something a little further out because at this point, um, you know, this actual contract has moved up. Yeah, I also have three supports on it just in case it pulls back. Because this we're still bullish on it. We got that first support at 336.46. And then we got mm -hmm. the next one here at 336.16. And then the next one after that's gonna be this 83 area right in here where that had that ascending kind of sideways channel breakout that took off Friday. So that's Netflix. The next one we're gonna talk about is gonna be another one that we've really been watching every day for a year. And I learned something from 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 Adam uh Koo that he, he monitors every stock every day. So this is something that we've watched for what, for Vegas for a year and a half at least? Mm -hmm. AMD? I monitor hundreds yeah. a day, but uh, I mean, I can't watch them all at the same time. I mean, I have my favorite watch list. So very important that you guys have a watch list and we'll do a separate video on that. So I want to talk to you guys about AMD because you know, AMD on RX 5600 um, is set to be unleashed. Uh, I can show you the article there written by Darren Allen from Tech Radar. And uh, what's going to be uh, different with this one here is that uh, this particular part is going to come with six gigabytes of video RAM. And it's going to have apparently a standard version and an uh, overclocked uh, model. And apparently also they're saying that um, they're going to also, you know, it might be a little bit challenging because. You know, the, the point he made here in this article was that AMD kind of settled on a six gigabyte for memory for video. And previously, when they released the RX 5500 XT, there was a four gigabyte and an eight gigabyte version, which could sometimes, you know, if you're looking to upgrade and buy the product, you know, which one do you get? So, uh, you know, people have to decide if they need larger amounts of RAM. So at any rate, he did mention that this product stands up against the GTX 1660 in performance terms and also said that also in pricing. Um, so I think it's looking at around 1650. So he says that we can expect a little more from this and it could be one to tackle this GTX 1660. So it'll be one that people will be watching. And, uh, you know, I got to say, AMD has just been a phenomenal trade for us. And I'm just so pleased to see that it broke through that $43. And uh, let's see what AMD wants to give to us. And good job to the CEO. She knows what she's doing, Lisa, and uh, really shaping this company up. And in my opinion, you know, AMD is kind of like a miniature NVIDIA. And uh, definitely giving them uh, some competition. So, Jim, let's hear about AMD. All right. Well, let me get it in. If I can get it in here. There we go. So here's the one-hour chart. We did have a, we do have an upper wedge on it right now. It's really showed some real solid strength on it. And this has been for the last week, a couple of weeks, where we've had that nice little wedge. And we are at a resistance level here at 46, 44, 16 right now. If we can break past that, we can break it t to new highs. I also set it up an alert for a pullback on this with Trend Spider, and it's going to be there right there around that 43, 42 area. If we can get down to that, I'll get back in the trade. It's right where that bottom of that trend bar is right here. And that's going to be at the 43, 42. So now I'm going to pull up the three minute, and it they have automatically have uh, an alert set. Let me show you something here. Let me wind this up a little bit. 
In case it starts to pull back, this alert will hit in this little force shield that's right around where that support level is, right there at 43.42. So if I can get in there, no, I'll just leave it alone. But if it hits this area right in here at 43.60, right about in there, this alert will trigger and it will prepare me to get into this trade. And if it goes on down, I mean, it'll bounce up. If it hits that 43.61, that's going to alert me. And I'll be able to watch this trade to get in the trade. If not, I'll take it at resistance and watch it rise. But that's just one of the benefits of Trend Spider. And then we're going to take it to the three minute, see what the three minute tells us. It doesn't tell me enough, so I'm going to bring it to the five. Okay, this is the 15 minute. So I'm going to draw me another trend line right in here where I think it could pull back if it wants to not want to go ahead and break this resistance that we have right here at 44.23. I'm going to draw that resistance line right there. There we got that one. Then I'm going to pull, draw a support line, which I think is right down here at the bottom, and it would be that 43.69. So I'll run over here to the horizontal line, and I'll hit me a little spot right there. Bam. But if it goes below that, and what I like about this buffer is that it allows you to, before it actually hits your trigger spot, it allows you to prepare yourself because it will hit, once it hits that little shadow right there, the alert will trigger. And I've got another one right here that I'm going to put for my next support level, and that's going to be right there, right around the 4391 area. So these are going to be the three supports that I'm going to be watching closely tomorrow and that's going to be this low support right here at the 4342 area the next one's going to be right here at 4369 and then I got that 4391 and the resistance that we need to break will be an all-time high there at 4423 and we're very bullish on this company I always play the pullbacks if it pulls back to this trend line that I have on this wedge that's going to be a strong buy right there at 4341 and that's it for AMD. And the next one we're going to talk about is another one that, that's got a lot of action on Friday and a lot of people are interested in, and that's going to be Uber. Well, you know what? Uber was amazing. Uh, I've been watching the stock for some time. I have actually never really traded this um, option and uh, watched it before, but never really traded this option. Um, it's been a long time, so i got to say, I spotted that breakout and I called the trade and I'm very pleased with this one as well. Um, you know, Uber, you could see on the daily uh, was poised for a breakout. The volume was coming in and we called this trade here on the option side. This is a lotto play on Uber and we actually called this one here at 25 cents and I actually picked the $30 strike on Friday. And boy, we took Uber for a nice ride. And we took this all the way up a dollar. A lot of people sold at a dollar. And some people sold sooner. Some people sold at 75 cents. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, who's going to complain on 200% gains um, in some cases. But wow, what a move on Uber. And uh, this is just fantastic. So congratulations to many, many, many people and um was just a great return and actually that should say uh 300 gains i made a mistake i was calculating um, a different way but that's it was a 300 gains on friday on uber so i'll have to fix that um but what a trade and you know what we have a swing in place still with uber we have the 30 dollar and 50 cent calls that expire this coming friday we got those for 40 cents so it's 40 dollars for a contract there was money flow in there as well. And I'm looking for the stock to actually have a continuation. So Jim, let's hear about Uber. All right, here's another great trade that we're watching real closely. I'm gonna pull up the daily just to have a look at it here. You can see we're on a rebound. I noticed a lot of money coming in this stock. They're not gonna be very profitable probably until 2021, but yet we're, we've had a hard sell off. This, what's up here right around the $45 area. I remember when the IPO um, broke out, we called it down here at 30. We did hit that $30 target, and that's going to be 
where we're going to have to break out now. That's going to be our resistance there, 3042. And then with all these yellow lines above it are the resistance levels that we need to run it up. And the red ones, the white ones below it are the supports. I have the first support here. We have the resistance to break at 3042. We have the first support right here at 3005. The second one's going to be 2961. And then I doubt if we see $29, but if we do, that's going to be a strong buy. That's where it pulled back before and had that bounce up to that resistance level. Uh, actually, I put the wrong number in that one too. That's supposed to be right there at 3266. Somehow I got a 257 in there. Oh, there it is because I covered it. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot of sense. 3257 is going to be the long resistance, but the one we got to break is going to be that 3109. If we can get past that 3109, we're going to elevate on up. And that's going to be Uber. You can stop this chart at any time you like and write these numbers down. I, I believe I've got these pretty good right on right now. But we've got to break that resistance level here. Um, that pivot point at 3042. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Lulu, another one of our favorites. Well, it's definitely my favorite for sure. Um, I mean, you guys know I love Lululemon clothes and a huge fan of, this, of the company because I love the quality of the product and I love everything that they come out with. So I've been Lulu for many, many years. And uh, you know what? Like I said before, it's one of these companies, Canadian success, first of all. So congrats to Canada. And second of all, every time I go there, it's always busy. People are buying stuff all the time. The revenue's there. Nobody cares about the guidance being adjusted slightly. The stock is still a great company. It's fantastic also for people that like to have long-term holds. This is one of those companies. And my goodness, I was watching on Thursday night. I was going through a whole bunch of charts. And I really was looking at Lulu because I keep my eyes on this. You know, I've tried to trade this a couple weeks back. And the trade really did not go in my favor. It went the wrong way. And uh, I thought, okay, got to keep watching this Lulu because I know that this wants to do something. And you know what? <clears throat> um, Friday was the day. So spotted this on Thursday night. Had a top watch list first thing Friday morning. And my goodness, we nailed this one. Over 800% gains the same day. I called the 225 calls at 63 cents. So $63 investment. This went as high as $550 per contract. That is just incredible, incredible gains on a contract that expires the same day. There was over 2,300 contracts purchased that day. And also, Lulu's not done. I mean, at the same time, shortly after I called that, I was looking at the chart, really liked what I'm seeing, and said, you know what, let's roll these up into next week before the stock has its move. We took the 230 calls at 114, and those expire on Friday, the 27th. And you know what? I got to say, we're already up on those. I mean, those closed at 260 on Friday. So we're already up over $100 per contract on the Lulu swing trade. So, you know, some people don't like to trade lotto plays or they don't like to trade something that's stressful where they have to trade it today and then sell it today. It's sometimes overwhelming, especially, you know, if you have another job and you're not, you don't trade full time. I can totally appreciate that. But you know what? If you actually don't trade full time and you actually like swing trades, there's some great, great opportunities with these options. And Lulu was a fantastic swing trade. And already just for getting the option call at the right time, over $100 a contract, that's amazing. So Jim, let me hear about this amazing Lulu because it's definitely not done in my opinion. Oh no, we've, we've been in channel on this thing for almost six, almost a year long, just been straight up channel. Back in January, you know, I mentioned that double bottom and then when we had that double bottom right around the 110, 116 area, we just kind of took off and found resistance right around 151. It consolidated on down, following that trend all the way up. And it's never, and it hasn't shut his eyes since. Now, I do have a low support on this, but I don't think we'll see it by far. And that's 221.86. That's just the bottom of this new channel that we're creating. I don't don't see it coming down here to 208 at all. I mean, that's going to, if it does, it'd have to be something bad. 
but we're setting up into an ascending triangle. And we've got a resistance, your resistance here at 233.69 that we need to break. So I'm going to pull up the five minute, see if the five, if I put this on the five minute. Nope. We'll go up here to the 10. Okay. I'm going to look at something else here. The one hour. So we did, we did have a, a little, uh, Right now, we're, we're in the resistance area. We're right at 230.20. So if we can break past this 230.20 and go up to the 231.79 area, that's going to be our next resistance. And that's up about $1.50. This stock can run up like that in a day easily. And I'd watch it pre-market because I think it's setting up to break out up to a higher place. And that's going to be right around that higher resistance. And that's going to be right there at the 231.79. Then the resistance right after that is going to be the 233.25. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Pullback support no lower than this 226.99. If it decides to pull back, that's going to be your second support. And that first one, which is a couple dollar well, eighty lower, and that's going to be right around here at the 228.83. But right now you're you're kind of in that first resistance track, and that's right to 230.20. And the next one's going to be right at 231.79, long 233.25. Keep this on stock. I think this has a target, Miss Vegas, two, 260. Is that what it yes, said it in does. that news? Yeah, it has an upgrade. Yep. Yep. It has an upgrade to 260. So that's, that's, and that was brought in by Oppenheimer for a 260 target. And that's it for the aftermarket report, Miss Vegas. Well, I do want you to showcase one last thing, please. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, comment from Trader Jim, another Jim. I can only have so many Jims in my life. But uh, this Jim here, uh, Jim number two, we'll call him Jim number two. Um, you know, he made a, he sent me a message Friday night and uh, he said, you know what? He had a Robinhood account um, with $292 in it. And he decided to trade a few options this week with that account. Okay, so under a $300 account, and look what he says. I picked up 241% in gains, and he just loves being here. So, you know, to see that he took $292 under $300 and grew it that much is just amazing. Uh, amazing. I have another person in the room as well, and they shared, and I'll, I'll post it later so you guys could see, you know, um, they made over 1,000% this week alone. So again, small accounts can truly, truly grow. And it is really sometimes about waiting for the trade to come to you. Jim says this all the time. I say it all the time. You know, some, a lot of good swing ideas. Some people don't want swings because they don't, they're afraid to hold things overnight. They only want to trade, uh, day trade. But sometimes with PDT rule, it's harder um, so, you know, but sometimes there's good opportunities here when the trade setup comes to you. We had many of those on Friday and, um, you know, if you ever want to come by and learn about these things, you're welcome to come visit our room. We always do a lot of live voice coaching and, uh, you know, it's one thing to get an alert, but you know, it's very important to know when to get out of the trade. Not everyone tells you it's time to sell time to scale out. You know, they'll just say, well, you know, your exit's your own plan, which, of course, you should have a trading plan. You should know when to get out or have an idea. But you know what? That is only comes with experience. When you're new, you need the coaching and guidance. And that's what Jim and I love doing. So you're welcome to come visit and we'd like to see you. So on that note, have a great week. Trade green. And if we don't get to talk to you this week, have a fantastic holiday season for those of you that celebrate. Um, have a great Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll definitely be talking to you throughout the week. Jim and I will still be here uh, working away, so I'm sure we'll talk uh, again. And Jim, you have a great weekend. Yep. I also wanted to talk about a little bit about the market. You know, 2019 was a really great year, and I want to see it continue into 2020. We heard a lot of cries about recession coming, recession this, you know, how bad the trade war was going to be to the market we had a rough ending of 2018 correct but it was overdone it was oversold and we mentioned it and we've done nothing but rise up to the top markets at all-time highs 
nobody would ever think and i've been saying this every day in the room that i am bullish on this american economy and back when they're when social media was crying out recession a couple months ago i was just kind of laughing it off the unemployment's great minorities are going back to work uh people are getting off of welfare you know cutting back on the food stamps i mean the economy's in great shape and i see that going in to 2020 unless we get into a big war or something but i kind of like to just mention that that 2019 was a great year i was bullish all year long on the economy and i played all the dips and that's what you got to do play the opposite of what the media tells you and and you'll be doing good into 2000 we are overextended in a way but the economy i'm telling you it's the best economy i've seen in my lifetime and that's it. Yeah. And that's the spy chart and that I, I'm showing I you right say, here. I, I know we say that's it, but I just have to throw one last thing in. So today's charts that Jim showed everyone, those are courtesy of our partners at Trend Spider. And, uh, you know, I will be posting out there for those of you that follow us on social media. If you don't, you may want to follow. Um, you know, I'm going to be posting. They have a promotion. They have a holiday sale. You can get seven days free. As you guys know, they offer a free trial. And also, if you decide to sign up, if you like the chart platform, you will get 40% off when you start your trial by January 1st, 2020. So that's a really nice New Year's gift uh, from Transpider. I'll definitely post the link in the video as well in case you want to sign up for the trial. No one is ever obligated to uh, take any products at all. You could try them for free, no risk. If you don't like it, obviously, you don't continue and you just cancel the trial. So uh, again, it's just tools to help you, but you're not gonna know if you like them unless you get to try them for free. And that's why I really love the fact that they do give the free trial. And so they thank also, you so much to the Trend Spider team. Yeah, and they're having a holiday special too. 2019 holiday sale is now live. That's right. Yep. Okay guys, have a great weekend and see you tomorrow. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is December 22nd, 2019. Play it kind of safe. I think it's going to be a slow week this week. Holiday is here. People are going to take off. Portfolios are going to be switched around. We did have our Santa Claus rally. And that's it for the Aftermarket Report. I love stocks. And we love stocks.